influences do you look at before you decide, okay, you know, Kratos is going to move like this, or uh, this character is going to move this way, or this is the kind of style of uh, combat he's going to undertake. Like, how does that, how does that work? This is for either of you. Well, I mean, I, I'll start. I'm going to hand that off to Eric, because I think that a lot of that comes out of the the actor portion of it. But usually we're talking about a character, like, let's say Kratos. Who is he? Is he young? Is he old? Is he muscular? Where does his strength come from? Where does his uh, motivation come from? And we really want to think about that and how does that represent through his emotion, through his body, through his weapons? Uh, why is he fighting? And then we put that forward to sometimes the animator, the character artist, and then a guy like Eric. And we'll say, now that you understand who this character is, and hopefully we've put them in a way that makes sense, right? I don't want to have like a puny weakling like me with a giant battle axe and say, go fight for your freedom. And it's just like, personally, I don't, I can't find that motivation in myself with these skinny arms, you know? So like, if I gave that character to Eric, he'd be like, okay, we're going to make this, he'll probably make it a humorous game at that point where I'm just like, it's like struggling and like with the ax or whatever. But the point is we try to give them all the tools and, and here's the direction we want to go. How would you do that? And that's sort of where I let, leave it to Eric here. Mm. The, so when I went and did, uh, I did Avengers, the new Avengers game, and I did the, the combat in-game again, that's the main thing I do is in-game combat for Hulk and Thor and then part of Captain America. And when I went and did Hulk, I... I actually put I, I pulled the designer aside at the beginning of the day and I said, can we just talk for an hour? I know it's weird, but can we take an hour just to talk about the character? And he said, oh, yeah, he totally got it because he understood that the more, like Joe's saying, the more story you can front load into your into your performer. And that's why you're hiring them. You're hiring an actor. And we're physical actors. We're not. Uh, we're, we're not just martial artists doing a kata. Like we, we, we take everything about the character that you can possibly give us, provided it's finalized, which sometimes it's not. Sometimes they don't know. Uh, and you just kind of have to generalize some things. But it, that's why they put script first so often at game studios. And that becomes the Bible uh, because that dictates everything. And it should. It should. The, script, the story dictates everything. And the combat absolutely has to con uh can, um, you know, work with the script. And every character motion has to make sense with that story. And so we took an hour and I said, this Hulk, does, is his idol like this? Where's his, where's his power center, right? Or whatever, he, whatever you might call it. Is he, is he breathing heavy? And what, how, how long is his, anime, anime, uh, his anticipation? Is he sloppy? Uh, or is he pretty sure-footed? How do you want him to kind of move around? Is it always straight line? Can we zigzag? You know, all these questions. And I just loaded them up and what, what ended up happening when I started uh, doing the actual motion capture for Hulk, then we would get it in the first or second take. And it actually sa it actually shaves off time when you can, as a director or an animator, and you know, a lot of the time animators have to direct the actors, which is not an easy job. But the more information you can give the actor to let them do their job, the better. Because it, be it can become very difficult if, for example, if you, if you just want to marionette your actor, and say, I need your arm to be up here and the other arm's down here. I need you to move like this and run stick, you know, run six feet and then swing. And then, then your actor starts moving around like he doesn't know how to move around, doesn't know how to swing a hammer anymore. And I've had this happen on shoots. They're terrible shoots, you know? And that's why, you know, you, if you do the Clint Eastwood method where you let your actor do what they need to do, provided you've hired the right guy, you know, the right girl, uh, then you'll get what you need. Just give them the right information, the right story. That's fascinating to be honest because i didn't know that that much um like depth and thought and stuff went into this kind of thing like went into like the combat in a game and that it actually comes from the story and like the way the character uh behaves and like just not just from his body movements but just the you know the emotional things he might be going through while he's fighting and stuff so, like that is that's incredible and, and i didn't know that so uh, you guys are educating me right now no it's really really interesting it's it's not something that we normally think about. And even when I first started, I would make the mistake of not thinking that it mattered. And mm -hmm. until you review it and you realize, oh, 
this is this doesn't fit why doesn't this fit and you're just like just oh. tonally we were having this puny character beat the living daylights out of this larger one and mm -hmm. there's and they're coming out of a sort of like happy space you know or like blood's coming out of somebody's eyes where it's just like that's just totally wrong it got a good reaction maybe uh in concept but now that we've put it in context of the rest of the mm -hmm. game it makes zero sense so you really have to sort of like how do we solve that issue without going all the way to finish and typically it always goes well we need to know this stuff way ahead of time so it's, it's just a matter of like you you learn it over time and you just keep trying to make yourself better and i think uh that's clearly something that eric holds himself to it's something i hold myself to and my teams it's like okay we did something great let's do it better and it, how do we do it better and if you constantly take that iterative approach to creativity or anything that you're doing, especially as a team, uh, you will come up with these just natural understandings that, oh, combat design isn't just something that we just place into the game or just animate yeah. in a box and then attach to any game. It's something that is very much part of the story, part of the world, and it needs, needs to fit with everything else. I'd be interested in, 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 in how your approach was designing the combat for a character like Lara, especially when you think about the original Lara, that was like that's, that, that you got to know as this super seasoned veteran that was scared of nothing, and now you had to start all over again with a young person that has to basically f not only fight for her life, but learn to fight for her life, basically like from one minute to the other, which was <laughs> a bit crazy if you think about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but but also to show how how uh, sorry sorry okay go ahead. <laughs> no no I was I was say I, I see exactly where you're going and I can't take total credit for how she became, but I was part of Lara's combat from, especially Tomb Raider Underworld, um, which was eight the last one before the reboot, and I was a, uh, we'll just say I was really cocky and arrogant and angry. Uh, as a designer because I was up against exactly what you talked about, this very efficient, acrobatic, um, perfect in every way Lara Croft. And combat is about challenge and conflict. And Lara, at the time, she had become incredibly confident, incredibly wealthy, incredibly acrobatic, and she really couldn't fail in terms of uh, who she was and the story that we were trying to tell. Um, so if I wanted to say, like, have Lara have, like, a difficult encounter with a tiger, right? Well, mm -hmm. maybe she can't do a triple backflip and headshot a tiger. That doesn't seem quite right. And they would say, no, well, you know, Lara really could. She's so practiced and perfect. She's got that gym, this, like, danger room in her mansion. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, well, maybe less ammo so that she has to sort of use her resources wise and they be like, no, 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 she's got infinite wealth. She can, she would never <laughs> move into a situation without all the Where's grenades the and the that she wants. So it was just like, how am I going to make a challenge for this woman? And it was, so it was like really difficult. And um, over the course of that game, I just complained and complained and complained. And so when I got a chance to be a part of the reboot team, we said, oh, I was like, this is it. I'm going to strand Lara on an island and we're gonna make her younger so that she is no longer confident and she doesn't have access to the resources. She needs to r find the resource within, it, within herself. So um, the mantra became smart and resourceful, Lara, not anything else, which before in the past it would be, um, what would Lara do? Which was like this whole weird take on the like religious statement, but it was like almost like Lara would always do the right thing. And it moved into Lara needs to rely on herself and find something within herself, and that is where the challenge comes from. And uh, that guided all of the combat from then on, and I think it was really successful.